Good morning, friends. Hello, friends. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hello, hello. Hello, friends. Good morning. Hey, Karen. Good morning to you. Hope you uh, hope you uh, didn't get too much weather down your way. Things are okay. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Well, we are coming up on Christmas. Even though I know for many, this is uh, yesterday's wind was pretty challenging. I just saw this morning that 85% of the state of Maine is out of power as of this morning. That is, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's, uh, that's not nothing. Um, good morning, Kristen. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're doing good. So, just before we get going this morning, I just want to make a note, uh, just a technical note. Um, you know, for those of you who follow us on, uh, particularly on Sundays, when we live stream on Sundays, uh, we continue to have trouble with our Facebook interface. But, on our Facebook, on both on our web page and on YouTube, uh, which are both actually better quality than Facebook Live, um, you can find us uh, streaming the service there. So, um, and also the the bulletin for the service is always posted up there. So just just wanted to let everybody know that uh, we're doing our very best to kind of get the interface with Facebook right. But something somewhere, Facebook has changed, not us. Um, where the Facebook interface and our and um, our live streaming in the sanctuary just doesn't seem to be uh, getting along these days. So um, really encouraging you to either check us out on the website or check us out on on our YouTube page. Uh, both of those um, have been working pretty seamlessly. So apologies for anybody who was trying to get to find their way last week. Um, I know the Facebook page, what the, the Facebook feed just wasn't cutting it. So um, what we can, you know, um, but that it really is beyond what we're able to, uh, to affect with where um, it, it's just something about Facebook's end and what needs to be changed or something. Maybe we can get it better, but we're working on it. But just so you know, um, yeah, I think uh, we that is in our comments. We'll actually put it in the Facebook page and on some of the stuff, too. So. All right, good morning, everybody. It is, uh, I, I wanna welcome you on this, the 19th day uh, of December, on this Tuesday. It is one of the darkest day of the year. This 19th, 20th, 21st, they're all almost, they almost have almost exactly, just one or two seconds different in terms of the darkest nights of the year. So tonight will be, today is one of the darkest days. Tomorrow, not looking good. The 21st, however, we begin to see the turn of the return of the light, so it's an exciting, and um, so it's an exciting time in the in the celestial world. <coughs> Excuse me, in the celestial world, it's also an exciting time in the spiritual world where we are coming to lift up Jesus the Christ, born in Bethlehem, come to come for us. So this morning, I want to talk a little bit about this notion of Jesus coming into the world for us and what we, what we see in this, uh, this, uh, these stories of, the, of, of Christmas. You know, because one of the most radical things about the story of Christmas 
is and this and this and and kind of the I want to kind of talk a little bit at the meta level, so I'm not going to read anything particular, but I'm just going to talk about our different characters that we have in the Christmas story. You see, the thing about the Christmas story is we think that it is actually this really dynamic story that is taking place of the birth of Christ and the 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 the, the journey from Bethlehem, the census that's taking place, the the flight from from Bethlehem to Egypt, the, all of these different things. But when you actually stand back and look at the story, the, the, the central participants in the story, the central, the, the, centra, the central folks, Joseph and Mary and even Elizabeth and John and the, 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 those, who would, those who would come to, uh, to, to bear witness, the wise men and the, the uh, shepherds and, the, and even the angels, they're actually, they actually don't do much at all. What do you mean? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, what do you mean they don't do much at all? What does Mary do? Mary gives birth to Jesus, carries and gives birth to Jesus, yes, but, and, and accepts this message from the angels. What does Joseph do? Just Joseph accepts that he is to care for Mary and accepts the message of the angels. What does the shepherds do? The shepherds contemplate this big ball of light in the sky and receive the message of the angels. What does the, the wise men do? They follow the star in the sky and essentially follow the, the, what they know to be this prophecy and this uh, important that the, that the Messiah will be born in this place, in this time, and they want to show its significance, that actually the, God, through, by, through the angels and through everything, God is actually the, the actor here. God is actually the one with all of the action in the story. God's the one, God's the one who is the is the initiator. God is the one that comes into the world through through uh, through being born through by Mary. God is the one who who you know. God is the one who sends the angels to to talk to Mary. God is the one that sends the angels to talk to Joseph. God is the one that sends the angels to 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 deal with the shepherd to to talk to the shepherds. God is the one. That what we actually discover in the in the in the Christmas story is that the divine is the is the principal actor, and now and this isn't true always in Bible. This is actually this is this isn't always what's happening. But I want to suggest to you that that the most important things in our life, and in fact many of the the most divine things in our life, the most the are are actually things that are not things that we do, or even not things that we can either screw up or not screw up in a way, but they are things that come to us. Don't you think about this? Think about the, the big things in people's lives, of the having of a child. It, it shows up and this thing has demands of you and all this sort of thing. You can respond to them or not, but, but to get you know, falling in love, there's this way in which, you know, the, 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 the lightning bolt strikes and you find this beloved and this person that get, makes you all woobly inside and you get all excited and you're, and you're squishy and you can't think about anything else. That, that when we think about our lives, we actually discover that, that the Christmas story actually has this microcosm of, of reality where, where it's God that comes for us. And that God comes in all of these different forms, these different ways. That if you if you don't think God comes to us when we're when we're honoring a new child, whether we're baptizing them in the sanctuary or whether we're celebrating them in our worship or whether we're whether we're their parent and we're we're the ones that are are uh, are are to charge for them, then I don't think you're paying attention. If you're if we're not if we're not noticing that there is a that uh, that when we you know when our heart gets moved or when we when we find a great passion or even when our you know, we, we, we swoon from the beauty of a song that just blows our socks off and, and moves us powerfully. We didn't do anything. What did we do? We subjected our ears to pressure waves. That's what we did. 
we subjected our ears to pressure waves and those pressure waves hit on our on our eardrum and those ear our eardrum hit little bones in our head and those little bones whack together and then the, when the bones whack together they actually whacked on a nerve and then that nerve would converted that into electrical impulses and those electrical impulses go went into our brain and that from that from that mechanistic, that from that that basic mechanism, this raw mechanism, we are moved by the most beautiful music in the world. We that are that it, from from the place of our of our of of going into our nervous system that is that turns that goes by the way from material stuff into what into electricity into more ethereal stuff. And then that finds its way into our soul and our spirit. And we are moved and we are transported and we are, are, uh, are, are alive when, when music touches us. Or the, the voice of our beloved or the, the cry of our child. You see, this is actually the way the whole, the, the Christmas story is actually the way the whole world is. Is that we think we're walking around. We read the story at the front end. We read the, we give it a gloss over and we say, oh, look, Mary is doing that and Joseph's doing that and these are doing that and these are doing that and these are doing that. Well, but when we actually stand back and we actually look, what we discover is that, that God is actually the actor in everything. That God is the mover in everything. God is the God is the the beginning, the first force in all things. God is the the creator and the you know why do why are we why are we excited about a beautiful song that moves us? Why are we excited about the holding of a baby? Or why are we excited about the the meeting of our beloved and the 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 wobbliness of our heart? Why do, why do we excited about those? Because we are made for those things. Just like a tuning fork is made for a particular note, we are made for those frequencies and we are made to respond to them and we are made to, we are made to be excited about them and by them. We were, we were created for them and that they were created for us and that the creator, God's work in action, is actually the first force moving us all. So when we talk about Christmas gifts, when we talk about the gifts of Christmas and the things that are coming, the greatest gift of the Christmas story, I think, is this gift of God coming for us that we discover in it. And, and that it's not just a, you know, one day 20, on the 25th and we can stuff the, you shove the tree in the, in the bank on the 26th kind of thing. It is, this, it, is a, it is speaking to the very nature of reality and the very nature of how we are and how we are wired. And that the invitation to us is just to commit to it. To just to just to receive it. To like Mary, when she receives the message from the angels, she pondered all these things in her heart. For for Joseph, when he's given the given every legitimate reason to be vindictive or to be mean or to be uh uh to be un, to be uh, uh, cruel and, and was at, would, would be in every right to do so in, in rejecting her for being for becoming pregnant, he would receive the visitation of the angels and rather be freaked out or denied or anything. He would simply receive it. He would simply receive it and commit to it. What would what did Mary do? She'd receive it and commit to it. What did the shepherds do? They received the vision, even though it freaked them out. They received it and they said, "Let's go see. Let's go see this thing." What do the wise men say? Well, let's go see. Let's cross a desert and go see what this thing has become. Let us commit to it. Let us bring ourselves to it and to, and to stay in a relationship with this, with this action that is working upon us and that is working upon the world. You see, the Christmas story is the story because, it is this, because Jesus is at the center of it. This is first force, this first movement, this first beauty, this first truth, this first love that is the originator of all loves and all truth and all beauty. And, and I think the thing is, is when we orient ourselves in this way, 
when we want, when we kind of, when we, when we recognize that God is coming for us, that God is coming for us. You know, we think we're out there searching for God or we're searching for the divine. We're not. We're we're hiding out most of the time. Where it's quite the the real honest the the real honest response is that it is actually God that is coming for us as the first force and the first action in all things in our life. And the best thing, the only thing, the the the, the simple thing we can do is just to to commit to it, to to listen for it. You know, and th- and this is I think really true about all things in our life is that there's this. There's this way in which that that just just seeing the thing through opens, you know, that that the opening ourselves to commitment, that to to the to the celebrating of the beauty of the song, the to the to the caring for our children, even when we don't necessarily want to or we don't know how to or whatever, the 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 the, uh, the caring for the the beautiful in the in our midst and committing to it, the the opening ourselves to those things, all of them. Bring us to this, this invitation of this these days. So I, so I want to, I want to, um, I want to hold, lift up for you in this, in these days, uh, this simple and yet beautiful, I think, truth that God is coming for you, not with righteous, not with vindictiveness. Not with meanness, not with cruelty, not with justice in mind, but with an idea to make all things right, with an idea to to be closer to you if you'll have them, with an idea to 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 uh, to make your heart swell all the more than it ever has, to make your to make your your body resonate with the truth of what is in a way that is more than it ever has, and that this when we put up the trees and we and we put out the glitter. And we set up the tinsel against the darkness of the world. This is what we declare. This is what we commit to. Is that God, the, the first force, the first actor, the who first loved us, comes into this world for us. All right, friends. This is my hope for you in this season. Um, it is this. It is this grand week. So um, my hope and it, my hope and prayers that are that uh, you have peace and grace and goodness in these days, and that they may be sweet ones. And so we'll pick it up tomorrow with another eleven eleven.